here we can see the diodes have gone and the bottom one's gone there all in all there's two, three, four before removing anything take photographs so that you can see where all of the wires are fitted and um, also would be a good idea to mark them with some paint so you know exactly where they come from and then we'll need to remove these two nuts and all of these terminals pull off the spade connectors and remove the unit with the wires off they tend to fall into the same place where they need to be refitted uh, they're quite quite stiff so um, this cuts the guesswork out for replacing them I just want to remove there now again just remembering that the double one goes to the left and the single one goes to the right and just to be on the safe side and this one here we've bent back out of the way Super MiG 180 um, blown rectifier if you look you'll see these cheap inferior diodes that they use on the uh, on the less expensive models of MiG welders and if one goes and then it's not long before the others pack up because it tends to overload the next one so rather a bad design so what we're going to do now is we're going to replace these with some substantial diodes so to work out the direction we'll trace the, uh, the earth clamp back through and this is the wire back through which goes onto this this point here so that's the earth out and this wire here uh, goes to the torch so that's the direction that the current is flowing uh, from the rectifier out to the uh, out to the torch and this enables us to sort out which way around the matching pairs of diodes fit we'll be using four diodes as opposed to this uh, 12 diode set um, so that will be four substantial diodes and hopefully we'll get the welder working the diodes I've chosen are from this seller from Taiwan so I've got two diodes Uh, 70 amps 1600 volts so I ordered two matching pairs so one pair of diodes 70 HFR which means they're reverse polarity and the other pair is 70 HF 160 which is the standard direction and the price £8.45 for two and £3.90 postage here you can see the difference with the arrows pointing uh, one arrow is pointing towards the stud and the other arrow is pointing away from the stud to make our bridge rectifier we're going to use the, the original heat sink and we're going to remove these pressing diodes, press fit diodes so to do this we first need to cut off the, the electric uh, the, uh, the wire, the connector so we'll cut that very close to the diode itself and just bend them out of the way and we'll use these to connect up to the, to the new diodes and again we can nip them all off close you just bend the wires out of the way so once you've bent the wires out of the way you need a piece of tube, it can be a socket um, from, a, from a ratchet set and your, your tube needs to fit 
over the the, uh, the diode stud and then you need a pair of water pump pliers and all we need to do then is just press there you go and that's the old diode taken out and we need to do that with all of these the, the new Vichy, Vichy diodes yeah they've got a little arrow um, this can be rubbed off so be careful to make a note of, of which which diode you've got uh, and this indicates the direction of the flow of current now we know here that the uh, the torch is bolted onto this this terminal here so the current flows from the center out towards the uh, the torch terminal so we choose the diode that is actually flowing the current back to the stud in this case now also the diode is a little bit too um, it's a little bit too tall to be in the uh, in the um, rectifier so it's a very simple fix so all we do is we take a pair of pliers <coughs> so we need to bend this tab down it, it doesn't break off I've tried it, tried it previously so just gently bend it round at an angle a little bit more and then once we've done that we take some stout copper wire and we'll fold it in the centre and just squeeze the, the ends together and this will then thread through the hole and then we'll bend it over again we'll take a pair of pliers and just pinch these two a couple of wire together take a bit of patience and just make it nice and tight And then we'll apply, we'll apply solder to the join. Here's one I prepared earlier. So we'll solder that in. And then these strands will pick up on the tabs inside. So this will spread the electricity, um, the current. It will spread it out across three terminals. And that's what we'll do there. And you can't use a, um, a shrouded cable because if there's any any heat generated by the electricity flowing through it could actually cause a fire hence the original ones have no shrouding so we'll do the same to solder it you'll need the appropriate flux but we're using a an old-fashioned iron because they transfer a lot more heat so you may you may even need even with this you may need to heat it up a couple of times Yeah, it's just starting to run now. So we just kept it in a pair of pliers. That also helps with the heat transfer. Yep. The next step is a bit tricky. Fix the diodes in place loosely and then solder each of the wires to each of the tabs where the original wires were located. It takes a little bit of doing. Um, again we used the old fashioned soldering iron which seemed to work well. Make sure you get the correct flux and best of luck. The four diodes that we replaced now need to be tightened up so find the appropriate spanner and make sure you don't twist these round um, a small small pin is a 11mm and I used an 1116 spanner 
Oh yeah, on the inside, that's the best fit I've got. And we'll need to refit the, the bridge rectifier. in a little bit. As you can see the wires that were removed were stiff so they've, they've stayed in virtually the same place so they're all lined up nicely but uh, of course you took a photograph so there's no chance of a mistake and again these, these all lined up nicely a little bit difficult to put on we'll bolt all those up and tighten them up and see what happens our new bridge rectifier is back in place. Just be sure not to over tighten the diodes um, because these are copper threads and very easy to strip. But make sure that all of the pins are se secure, all of the terminals are secure, and we're ready to fire it up. still sticking a bit. Still got some rusty wire in there. Mission accomplished. Welding now completed and cleaned up.